In the old days, if I walked into a room or met somebody, I'd say to myself, that person is influencing how I feel. How many of you feel that way? You meet somebody, you go into a room and you say, oh, these people or this person is now changing how I feel. I'm feeling, you know, uh, dumb or nervous or something. They're affecting me. But here's something I learned in college also. When I smoked marijuana, people acted nice to me. And when I didn't, they didn't act as nice. And for years, I couldn't figure out why. And I thought it was because the marijuana made me see the world differently. I thought, okay, that's just, I'm, that's just uh, an illusion because when I'm high, just everything looks better. So I, I just remember people being nicer, but it's not really happening. It's just an illusion. Eventually, as I learned more and more about how the world is wired, I realized I was causing all those people to act the way they acted. When I came with my relaxed, happy stoner look, they immediately copied me and they became relaxed and happy and easy to deal with. Once I realized that they weren't affecting me so much as I was affecting them, then I said, wait, here's the reframe. Every time I walk into a room, I say to myself, well, how do I want to affect these people? Try it. Watch how that totally changes your experience of life. Cause I'll bet you walk into a room and say, well, these people are affecting me. Oh, what are they doing to me now? Uh, they're, they're making me feel sad, right? I don't do that anymore. Now, part of it is because being famous helps you get into this, you know, frame of mind. But when I walk into a room, I know I'm changing those people and I have to decide how. So I say, well, I think I'll make you friendly. And then I make them friendly and I go, I think I'll get you out of that bad mood. And then I do it. I say, I think I'm going to make you like me, make somebody like me. I change the people in the room. They don't change me. Now, are they changing me? Of course. It's just that I choose to ignore that frame entirely because if I'm actively trying to change them, which is actually what I'm thinking, I'm actively thinking, I would like you to like me. I'd like you to laugh. I'd like you to uh, do something with me later. I'd like you to agree with me. I'd like you to respect me. And then I do the things that make you do those things. And it works every time. Basically every time. Yeah. It's like, doesn't, doesn't ever not work. All right. Here's another reframe. This also will be from the book. Does anybody have social anxiety? You, you go to a gathering and you're like, oh shit. There's people there. I'm going to have to talk to people I don't like. Ah. All right. I'm going to reframe it away from you. Okay. If you go, if you have social anxiety, you go to an event and you say to yourself, oh God, these people are affecting me. I'm like, I'm sweating. Those people are doing this to me. They're affecting me. All you have to do is learn the few, like a five minute lesson on how to make conversation. If you learn the five minute lesson on how to make conversation and primarily it's about asking reasonable questions and listening more than you talk, that's the whole technique, right? Everybody will like you. Everybody will like you. If you do that, it's, just, it's the Dale Carnegie process. If you learn the technique, Hey, how, how you doing? My name's Scott. So, uh, you know, do you work here? Where do you live? You have a family? You know, it's just basic questions that sound. They sound like they're too no too nosy, but in fact, people like to be able to talk about themselves because it, it eases them. All right. Here's the reframe. Next time you walk into a room, don't do it unless you've learned the lessons of how to ask questions and introduce yourself. So that's your basic. You have, you know how to start a conversation and you know how to introduce yourself. Now, when you walk into the room, you are saving people. You're saving them. You see somebody who's not talking to somebody. What do you think's going through their head? Oh shit. Oh shit. Everybody sees me not talking to anybody. Oh God. Do they notice I'm, I'm not even talking to anybody. Oh fuck. I need to talk to somebody. And you say to yourself, I can save that person. And you go over and introduce themselves. Now you save them. They have somebody to talk to. And if you ask them to talk about themselves, they're double saved. They're saved twice. Now they have somebody to talk to and you made it easy. 
Oh God, you just solved my problem. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you where I work. That's easy. And then you have to also learn how to uh, make an excuse to leave. One that I like to use, if, if you don't have to go to the bathroom and you don't need to refresh your drink, and those are automatics, I use those a lot. Here's one you just say directly, because you're probably there to mingle. So I say, hey, it's been great talking to you. I'm gonna, gonna do a little more mingling. 100% of people are okay with it because they're probably there for the same reason, do a little mingling. So just say, hey, it's great to meet you. Um, you know, maybe exchange phone numbers if it went well. And you say, uh, you know, I'm going to do a little more mingling. And I'll catch up with you later. Right? So now I just solved your biggest social problem. The moment you realize that with the, the smallest number of skills, you're, you're the CPR person. You're like, okay, there's one struggling. I'll go save that one. Yeah, there's one. I can save them. Somebody comes into your little group of three. And you see that uh, it's like a shy person who's trying to get into the group. Be the one who opens up, right? Instead of being the one who keeps talking because you don't know what to do, open up your body. And even, even sometimes if there's a little gap, introduce yourself to the new person. You know, don't continue the conversation like they didn't exist. Introduce yourself to the new person because you saved them. Have you ever come up to a group of people talking and they don't, they don't acknowledge your existence? You have, right? It's awful, isn't it? It's the worst feeling. It's like you don't exist, right? So you can instantly change yourself from the person who's one of them to the person who's saving one of them. Just go save them. Here's another trick for uh, social interaction. Pick out the highest functioning um, social operator. Might be an organizer, but usually you can pick out, uh, and it's usually female. There's usually a dominant female, like connector. It depends on the group, of course, could be male. But if you find the dominant person who's like the real social connector, go right to that person. Because the moment you meet that person, what do they do? What does that person do? They immediately introduce you to the three people standing next to her. And then they say, I got a mingle, I'll see you later. <laughs> and they're off. And then you've got three people that you now met that you can now connect with again if you if you find yourself alone and suddenly. Now, how much did that help? It's my opinion that a simple reframe like that can change probably, I don't know, 20 to 50% of the people um, just immediately, just immediately. You won't believe how much it works until you do it.